I want to introduce with a few words Mr. Stephen Petroni. I change in German. Herr Petroni is Mr. Petroni is the president of the Maltese Society for Weapon Owners and Shooters, also head of the European Association for uh, Weapon Collectors, a really excellent uh, representative of experts in the area of collectors. I'd like to thank uh, Firearms United for this invitation. I'd also like to thank the Commission for bringing so many wonderful people together. We are indeed now a very a considerable force which has to be taken into account. I also congratulate uh, Mr. Alexis because somehow the manner in which he delivers the commission rhetoric always makes me feel like we have to um, feel good while we're being robbed and beaten. So he has a very good way of delivering it. So let us get down to business. Let us look at our perspective, the collector's perspective, and the collectors have really been given the wrong end of the stick. We were um, originally exempt from the directive, um, but the Commission has proposed to bring us into the directive, um, according to Mr. Alexis, because it is almost unfair that we were the only group that were left out, but we weren't uh, unhappy about that. Um, but in reality, it is very simply a case where the Commission feels that what was being administered at member state level should, in many cases, be administered at the Commission level. So it's just a question of transfer of control. I have here a presentation just to help you understand what the role of a collector is. And I will start, I, I will not repeat the words that are actually written in my slides, but I will just go along with what is written. You can read it, it's quite clear. Um, the role of the collector is very important in society. We perform more or less the same work that museums do, and in many respects, even more. If you look at the publications which are on bookshelves, and which are even on the bookshelves of museums, you will find that 90% of them are written by collectors. And why is that? It is because the individual collector takes a very deep interest and a very specific interest in aspects of firearms and for that reason can go into an academic level which is rarely reached by other entities. Um, we research, we, we conserve firearms, we, we do all this and we do it with our own resources. The government doesn't pay us for doing this so this is done out of our own pocket. Moreover, if you look at museums, you will find that a lot of museums either own parts that once belonged to uh, private collectors or else whole private collections have become museums. When you look at the, when you go beyond the individual collector and you look at the collective um, job done by collectors, um, we can safely say that it outweighs what is done in museums. And this is without in any way taking away any of the merits that museums have. What we're saying is that when you have hundreds of thousands of collectors and every one of those collectors is doing his particular um, activity, researching that particular sphere, when you look at it collectively, it is a considerable task and it is very beneficial to society. And the, uh, as I said previously, a lot of collectors and a lot of collections um, are intimately linked with museums, so much so that some museums are entirely formed of private collections. So, <coughs> who, in our opinion, should qualify as bona fide uh, collectors? Who are the people who we think should be bona fide collectors? We are definitely not referring to the same people which the Commission proposal mentions, because the Commission proposal is referring to, as uh, uh, Katja Tribel said very rightly, she is refer they, he was referring to um, individuals who are either accumulating weapons legally or illegally, who are carrying out an activity totally outside the parameters of the directive, 
And what the Commission has done, it is, has taken those people as an example of the regular collector. So in our opinion, as you can see in the slide, um, th these are the requirements for a person to be um, recognized as collector. In fact, this is a, a text that was written by our organization, by FISAC, and it has also been taken up by Parliament. So the version that you have now in the Parliament's um, uh, document is precisely the wording that we had drafted. However, we must also state, and I, I want to emphasize this, that a collector in terms of the European Directive is a person who is, all, who is recognized by his member state as carrying out that activity. So I cannot stand up and call myself a collector unless I am recognized as a collector by my country. And this is what makes the Commission proposal and accusation totally absurd. Because when the Commission stated that collectors may be a source of illicit trafficking, first of all, they were not referring to us, so we are not part of it. And secondly, they were only quoting selectively from a Europol report. Nobody has had the guts to table that whole Europol report so that we can see what the wording eventually says. It doesn't say just that. It says a little bit more than that. But the Commission quoted selectively. As things stand at the moment, under the current directive, member states are already obliged to recognize collectors. Okay? And most member states do that, and they do it very efficiently. There are a few that don't. Now, instead of tackling the countries that are not abiding by the directive, the Commission is proposing the writing of more documents, of more papers, of more regulations. This is what they are used to doing. They are not used to tackling a problem head-on. They try and solve a problem by writing more regulations. And if it hasn't been observed under the current regulation, will it be observed under the new directive? Of course not. The more paperwork, the, the higher the, the pile of paperwork that they will produce, the less result we will have. So what is really lacking and what has not been tackled by the Commission is the enforcement of the directive as it is now, which is perfect. I attended a meeting recently where there was Mr. Timmermans. He was in Malta, he was addressing a meeting there, and he used an expression several times, which I will quote here. And that is, if it ain't broken, don't try to fix it. He repeated this several times, so I'm going to repeat it for his benefit. You have something which is working, so why are you trying to fix it? You are ruining it. You are simply ruining it. Let us go to the origins of the current directive and why were collectors excluded. They were excluded because the authors of that directive were very wise in the manner that they treated this subject. They considered that the role of collectors and museums to be totally different to the role of sports shooters and hunters. And I emphasize, we are one big family, so I'm not saying this to in any way differentiate between collectors and sports shooters, none of that. It's just that in order to protect the activity of collectors, and even more so, in order to protect those historical artifacts from damage or destruction, the only way that it can be done properly is by excluding collectors from the directive. Because the moment that you include collectors in the directive, then all the other requirements that are necessary for sport shooting or for hunting, like marking, then come into effect. So if I have a, a very rare firearm, okay, let's say a prototype firearm, which is more or less unique, and you are going to add new markings to it, you are destroying its historical integrity. In other words, you are ruining a historical artifact. And that is why collectors were excluded in the first place. Here we have a, a photograph. Um, I met the Finnish Prime Minister, uh, Jirki Katainen, who at the time was Finnish Prime Minister there, and he is now one of the Vice Presidents, and we had a very fruitful meeting with him in June 2014. And he recognized the role of collectors. He told us how important collectors are in society. We are not a danger to anybody. We are doing something good. Now we'll just go to the next slide. It is on the 18th of November now, when everything came out on, uh, in, the, in the policy, in the proposal. 
and we saw that there were extremely drastic measures that were aimed at law-abiding citizens, not at criminals, not at terrorists. Soon after that, I wrote to Mr. Katainen, and the reply that I got from Mr. Katainen, but obviously now he's no longer Finnish Prime Minister, now he is a Vice President of the European Commissioner, of the European Commission, it changes a lot of things. And here he is stating that the Commission proposal is necessary, but will not affect collectors. And I'm sorry, I, if I'm a doctor, I don't need a doctor to tell me that something is wrong with me. I know exactly what's wrong. So, why is the Commission trying to fix something that is not broken? It does not, the Commission does not appear to believe in the most fundamental principle of subsidiarity. Here is a major, major problem. So rather than ensuring that all member states uh, stick to the current directive, it is using the terrorist attacks as a pretext to bring collectors within the scope of the directive, and the same with the other categories. So the Commission, as I said earlier, accused collectors of being a possible source of arms trafficking. However, the Commission has never produced any evidence. FISAC has taken action with the European Ombudsman because it believes that there is a very clear case of maladministration. Because if a Commission official accuses an individual, a new citizen, wrongly, then obviously something is wrong. The Ombudsman tried to throw our case out, but we are not having any of that, and we will keep on persisting until we see that justice is being done. Because people who have um, pushed us in the, into this position should be taken, should, should be responsible for their words and for their action. So the consequences of this directive from the, commissioner, from the Commission's point of view would have been the utter destruction of very important collectibles, the freezing of museum collections, and the permanent damage to collection, collector species in museum collections. And you can't get, get any more um, ridiculous than that. I mean, th this is just how ridiculous this commission proposal is. So I'd like to wind up. Thank you for your time. And I do hope that common sense prevails.